Now, our text for today is found in Luke chapter 5, verse 1 to 11. I'm going to read this passage. And it came to pass that as the people pressed upon him to hear the word of God, he stood by the lake of Genesaret and saw two ships standing by the lake, but the fishermen were gone out of them and were washing their nets. And he entered into one of the ships, which was Simon's, and prayed him that he would thrust out a little from the land. And he sat down and taught the people of the ship. Now, when he had left speaking, he said unto Simon, Launch out into the deep, and let down your nets for a drop. And Simon answering said unto him, Master, we have toiled all the night, and have taken nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the net. When they had this done, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes, and their net brake, and they become unto their partners, which were in the other ship, that they should come and help them. And they came and filled both the ships, so that they began to sink. When Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. For he was astonished, and all that were with him at the drought of the fishes which they had taken. And so was also James and John, the sons of Zebedee, which were partners with Simon. And Jesus said unto Simon, Fear not, from henceforth thou shalt catch men. And when they had brought their ships to land, they forsook all and followed him. We see in this passage in Luke, Luke chapter 5. In verse 1, it's, it says here, And it came to pass, that as the people pressed upon him to hear the word of God, he stood by the lake of Genesaret. Now take note of the word, the people pressed upon him to hear. Our theme is, how could you respond to the call of God. First is that you must see the great need. You must see the great need. We must see the great need. People press upon Him to hear. We are always inclined to see our needs, not the need of others. Parati natin tinitingnan yung needs natin, hindi yung iba. We have pressures in this life. And you are pressed to work. You have pressures in your work. And oftentimes, you work and work, kahit hirap na, kahit hindi kailangan, kahit uh, mahirap ang pagkatrabaho, you work. But sometimes, it's not really the main thing that dapat mong gagawin. Kasi you just need to work. Dahil there are many demands in life. We have many needs. And some of the needs are not met. Isa dyan is loneliness. We fail to see the value of Matthew 6.33. Hindi mo nakikita, ano ba kahalagahan ng Matthew 6.33? Anong sabi sa Matthew 6.33? But seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. You see, the secret of success the secret to success and meaningful life 
is first of all is living for the purpose of God. Of course, our main purpose in life is to live for Jesus. Ang sabi nga sa sa 1 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 20, ye are bought with a price, therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit. And the second is meeting people's need. Jesus said in Luke chapter 19 verse 10, For the Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. Meeting people's need, and you know the, the greatest need of man is salvation. Yung kaligtasan, yun po ang pinaka-greatest need ng tao. At marami pang ibang needs. People need to hear God's word. Because there are so many problems in this life. They need comfort from God's word. They need to grow. Many Christians are weak and they need comfort. Kailang pala kasi, Proverbs chapter 11 verse 25, The liberal soul shall be made fat, and he that watereth shall also be watered himself. When you water others, you will also be water. Kapag pinapalakas mo yung iba, ikaw din ay lumalakas. If you are being a channel of blessing, the Lord will also bless you. Isaiah chapter 58 verse 10 to 11, it says here, in Isaiah chapter 58 verse 10 and 11, it says here, And if thou draw out thy soul to the hungry, and satisfy the afflicted soul, then shall thy light rise in obscurity, and thy darkness be as the noonday. And the Lord shall guide thee continually, and satisfy thy soul in drought, make it fat thy bones, and thou shalt be like a watered garden, and like a spring of water, whose waters fail not. Now according to the passage, that you will be like a watered garden when you water others. When, when you reach out to the needy, to the afflicted, you will be blessed. And you know why so many people or so many Christians are not blessed? They are not following God's direction in their lives. They're not growing. They're not following God's will in their lives. You will be blessed if you do what God wants you to do. Kaya nga, pag ang isang Kristiyano hindi naranasan na God is meeting His need, minsan gumagawa na lang ng paraan para. Siya na ang bahala para yung gusto niya, makamit niya, kahit hindi sa kalooban ng Panginoon. You know, that will, that will be a great failure if you are not doing God's will in your life. If you're not following God's will in your life, do you think you are the one to bless yourself? You see, your, your life will be blessed if you would seek God first. Unahin mo ang Panginoon, not yourself. Your future is not in your hand. Your future is in the hand of God. Now, let's go back to the point. You see, how could you respond to the call of God if you do not see the great need? You see, kung titingnan natin, people press upon Him to hear. Ano ba pinaka-greatest need ng tao? Salvation. People press upon Him to hear. Jesus was preaching. And a lot of people are gathering. You know po, hindi po nalalakos ang salita ng Panginoon. And you know, you would feel so useless without purpose and direction if you are just living for yourself. Kung nabubuhay ka lang para sa iyong sarili, wala ka ng direction. You feel na parang, parang wala kang silbi sa mundong ito. God wants to reach out to the lost people. The harvest is truly plenteous, but the laborers are few. No, na preach Jesus, a lot of people 
at pressing upon him to hear God's word. Siguro kung hindi si Jesus lumipat doon sa isang boat, siguro wala na siyang space. Ano? Pero dumistan siya si Jesus, sumakay siya sa isang boat, dinistan siya niya doon sa habang siya yung nagpipreach. And a lot of people really are are pressing to hear God's word. And you might think nobody is going to hear you if you are going to to preach God's word. May kasabihan kasi na when God calls a man, He's the one who will equip that man. You must see the great need. Mas kailangan ka ni Lord kaysa ibang tao. Mas kailangan ka ni Lord. Kung titingnan mo ang daming tao, minsan ang hirap na mag-promote para lang mag-gather ng tao. But you see, when Jesus preached, people pressed upon Him to hear. And don't think that no one is going to hear you if you are going to preach God's word. You know, hindi tumitingin ng Panginoon kung sino ka. Hindi tumitingin ng Panginoon sa ability kung hindi tinitingnan niya if you have a humble heart willing to be used by Him. Hindi tumitingin ng Panginoon sa abilidad ng tao. Kundi doon sa willingness that you will be used by the Lord. The second point here, how could you respond to the call of God? Let's go back to Luke chapter uh, let's go back to Luke chapter 5. Verse 2 and so two sheep standing by the lake. But the fishermen were gone out of them and were washing their nets. And also, and he entered into one of the ships, which was Simon's, and prayed him that he would thrust out a little from the land. And he sat down and taught the people of the ship, out of the ship. And when he had left speaking, he said unto Simon, Launch out into the deep, and let down your nets for a drought. And Simon answering said unto him, Master, we have toiled all the night. And I've taken nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the net. The second point is that how could we respond to the call of God? Or how could you respond to the call of God? You must see your own limitations. You must see your own limitations. So, makita natin sa verse, sa verse 2, They were fishing, but they caught nothing. Wala silang nakuha ang isla. Nung si Jesus nagpipreach, anong ginagawa nila? Yung mga fishermen, what were they doing? They were already washing their nets. Anong ibig sabihin nun? Tapos na. Tapos na, we have tried, they were exhausted. They failed. And oftentimes, we are exhausted with our work and we fail a failure. Sometimes we do fail and we think we are a failure. You might have exhausted yourself with all your trying, with all your strivings, and you think you are a failure. Ano bang sabi ni Peter sa verse 5? Ano bang sabi ni Peter sa verse 5? When the Lord told him, launch out into the deep. And Simon answered and said unto him, Master, we have toiled all the night and have taken nothing. We have toiled all the night and have taken nothing. We have done their best. But there was no good result. Wala pa rin nangyari. All the night. Ibig sabihin, buong gabi. Pagod na pagod sila. In verse 2, makita natin na pinuhugasan na nila yung net. Evidently, they given up. Supo na sila. Surrender na sila. Exhausted na sila. No? 
they've seen their limitations. Mga kapatid, God sometimes has to close a door for you to see a great door opening. Minsan, sinisaraduan ng Panginoon yung door kasi hindi mo nakikita may may mas malaking opportunity, mas may malaking door na bukas. Ano bang ginagawa mo pag sarado yung door? Minsan, pipilitin mo, baka basahin mo pa yung door. Di wala din, di mo rin kaya basahin yung door. Door represents opportunities. It does not mean when God opens a great door, there are no adversaries or no obstacles. Kung titingnan natin sa 1 Corinthians chapter 16, 1 Corinthians chapter 16, anong sabi dito? Sabi ni Paul, verse 9, it says here, For a great door and effectual is opened unto me, and there are many adversaries. For a great door and effectual is opened unto me, and there are many adversaries. Kahit sa gawain ng Panginoon, it does not mean that there are no hindrances. It does not mean that there are no obstacles. Pero when God gives the opportunity, sometimes, sipisipin natin, we have to think, ano ba ang Um, pwede nating magawa, lalo na sa ganitong sitwasyon, pandemic, quarantine, apektado yung mga gawain. But we, we, we have to divert to other means or create ways, isipisipin natin ano ba ang pwede nating magawa. We don't easily give up, lalo na pagdating sa gawain ng Panginoon. Ganun din si Paul, he was involved sa gawain ng Panginoon. At ang sabi niya, for a great and effectual door is opened unto me and there are many adversaries. Ibig sabihin, hindi ibig, ibig sabihin may mga problema. Hindi ibig sabihin na walang problema. Lalo na pagdating sa gawain ng Panginoon. Or maring sa yung work, work opportunity, it does not mean that there are no problems. You see, the two spies and the ten spies that was sent in the promised land, panahon ni Moses. Yung ten spies ay puro negatibo. When they were sent to the promised land sa kanaan, ang nakita nila at ang report nila ay sabi nila kay Moses, ang laki ng mga higante, hindi natin kaya. Pero yung two spies, si Joshua and Caleb, they were so positive. They saw the fruitfulness of the land Sabi nila, the land is fruitful. While ang report ng 10 spies ay negatibo. What happened? Pinagbabato si Moses ng mga Israelites. Bumalik sila sa wilderness. They were not able to enter the promised land because of doubt and negativity. Dahil sa kawalan ng pananampanataya. So, you see, there are people who see problems in every opportunity and there are people who see opportunities in every problem. Hindi po natin titingnan kung anong kakayahan natin. Titingnan po natin anong ang kakayahan ng Panginoon. And oftentimes, God uses weak people for a great task. There is a saying, God uses ordinary people to accomplish great and extraordinary tasks. And sometimes, why God allows, allows weaknesses? Bakit marami tayong weaknesses? Para hindi tayo magdepende sa ating sarili, kundi sa Panginoon. Sabi nga sa 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 26. 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 26. It says here verse 26. For you see your calling brethren how that not many wise men after the flesh not many mighty not many noble are called. 
But God had chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. And God had chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty. Verse 28, And base things of the world and things which are despised have God chosen, yeah, and things which are not to bring to naught things that are, that no flesh should glory in His presence. Kung ang isang tao puno ng abilidad at kayabangan, oftentimes hindi siya nagagamit sa gawain ng tanong. Pero kung sino yung mahihina, yun ang ginagamit. Kasi yun ang magde-depend sa ating Panginoon. So you see, ang Panginoon, He's not looking for those who have great abilities. He's looking for those who are humble, willing to be used by the Lord. God uses ordinary people to accomplish great and extraordinary tasks. What happened to Paul when he experienced affliction? Sabi sa 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 7, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 7, sabi nga dito, Unless I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelations, there was given to me a turn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan to Bafemi, lest I should be exalted above measure. Verse 8, For this thing I besought the Lord thrice, that it might depart from me. And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly therefore will I rather glory in my infirmities, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. In verse 10, it says here, Therefore I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecutions, in distresses, for Christ's sake, for when I am weak, then I am strong. So God has a reason why He allowed witnesses in us. May dahilan ng Panginoon. Paul experienced sufferings, affliction, May karamdaman siya. He prayed to the Lord thrice. Anong sagot ng Panginoon? My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Sabi nga, sabi nga dito, Most gladly therefore, Sabi sa verse 10, Therefore, sabi ni Paul, Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecutions, in distresses for Christ's sake, for when I am weak, then I am strong. Ang problema kapatid, kung naranasan mo ang kahinaan, tapos ayaw mo pang mag-depend sa Panginoon, that's pride. Pero kung you felt that you are weak, you are so helpless on your own, but you trust in the Lord, you are strong. You will develop, you will grow in your ability because God will help you. You see, sabi nga dito sa 2 uh, Corinthians chapter 4, verse 7, sabi nga dito, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 7, But we have this treasure in earthen vessel, vessels, earthen vessels, that means babas, babasagin, no? na lalagyan, tulad ng yung nilalagyan ng halangan. We have this treasure in earthen vessel, that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. O bang wala tayong may pagmayabang sa ating sarili. Kundi may pagmayabang natin ng Panginoon. That we can see how great God is. Kaya nga, sabi sa 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 9, sabi nga dito, 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 9, but we had the sentence of death in ourselves that we should not trust in ourselves but in God which raised the dead. We have the sentence of death. Andyan yung sufferings. Andyan yung weaknesses. Andyan yung mga problems. That we should not rely on ourselves but in the Lord. Anong sabi ni Paul? Philippians 4.13 I can do all things through Christ which strengthened me. So you see the importance of seeing our limitations. Mahalaga po. Upang mag, that we respond 
so that you respond to the call of God. You need to see your limitations. You need to see your weaknesses. Okay, so, yun po ang nangyari sa mga disipulo bago nila na-realize yung pagtawag ng ating Panginoon. Sabi pa, niya, sabi pa ni, ni, ni Peter, we have oil the whole night. So look, but they caught nothing. They were already washing their nets. We need to see our limitations. The third point is that we must see God's grace at work. Verse 3, let's go back to Luke chapter 5, verse 3. And he entered into one of the ship. He entered into one of the ships, which was Simon's, and prayed him that he would he would thrust out a little from the land. And he sat down and taught the people out of the ship. Pumasok si Jesus sa, sa boat ni, ni Pedro. He chose Simon's ship. There were two ships. There were two boats. Pero pinili niya yung kay Pedro. God can use anything available. You know, in the Bible, He used a donkey. Also, the Lord used the whale to bring Jonah to, to Nineveh. He can use anything available. And we must be available. Often times, pagsagawain ng Panginoon. Wala kang panahon. At sa ibang bagay, meron kang panahon. Pagsagawain ng Panginoon, you take it for granted and you are not available. You are not available for God's work. So, di ba dapat i-priority ang sa Panginoon? Matthew chapter 4, verse 19, it says, Sabi pa ni Jesus, Follow me and I will make you creatures of men. In 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 2, it says, And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, among many witnesses, commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 2, And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. So, commit to faithful men. Ano ba yung quality ng uh, characteristics of a potential disciples? Faithful, available, and teachable. Mahalaga po yung makita natin yung grace ng ating Panginoon at work in our lives. Kasi God's favor is on those who are humble. James chapter 4, verse 6, God resisted the proud, but giveth grace unto the humble. In James chapter 2, verse 5, it says, Hath not God chosen the poor of this world rich in faith? So merong pagpili ang ating Panginoon, pero hindi unconditional. Yung pagpili ng ating Panginoon is based on His foreknowledge of humility and faith, of our response to Him in humility and faith. There were two boats, but you know, the Lord chose the boat of Peter. Yung, yung, uh, it could be maliit or malaki, alansya. Hindi natin alam yung ginagamit sa fishing. Pinili niya yung kay Pedro. Kasi God is not after a proud great man. We, re we read in 1 Corinthians 1, 26 to 28, God had chosen uh, those who are weak. Pinili niya yung mahihina. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 2 says here, elect according to the foreknowledge of God. Yun ang pag-elect ng ating Panginoon based on His foreknowledge. God knows our weaknesses. He knows our frame. Psalms 103 verse 14, it says here in Psalms 103 verse 14, 
Sabi pa dito. Psalms 103 verse 14. For he knoweth our frame, he remembereth that we are dust. Parang alak, uh, inalim tulad tayo sa alikabok. God knows our limitations. But God has no limitations. We are still under construction. You are still under God's construction. Philippians chapter 1 verse 6. Sabi nga, For I am confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it unto the day of our Lord Jesus. Sabi ni Paul. God is at work in our lives. God continues to work in our lives, hindi patapos. Ano? Kaya, don't be bitter sa yung mga weaknesses. Sa yung mga kahinaan, rather, cling to the Lord, depend on the Lord. Psalms 139 verse 14. Psalms 139 verse 14. So, ang point dito, accept what you are, but grow in the Lord. Don't reject yourself because God loves you. Under thir- Psalms 139 verse 14, it says here, I will praise thee for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works and that my soul knoweth right well. See, kung bakit may mga kahinaan tayo. God allowed those things to happen. For us to depend on Him, to fully depend on Him, to trust in Him. You are wonderfully made. God has a purpose. Hindi patapos yung construction. Siguro makita ka ng bahay. Minsan makita ka, ang laki ng bahay. Ang pagtingin mo, ang pangit-pangit, ang gulo-gulo. Kasi hindi patapos. Pag matapos na. Ang ganda. Mansion pala. Kaya, huwag natin i-judge ang Panginoon yung ating sarili. He has a plan why they choose Petership. Because, bakit? Doon, pinili niya yung, yung boat ni Peter. First Peter chapter 5 verse 7, Casting all your care upon Him for He cares for you. Kasi, God cares for Peter. Jesus cared for Peter. And He cares for us. Ang reason, mga kapatid, bakit pinili niya? Kasi gusto niya mabigyan ng attention si, si Pedro. Gusto niya mabigyan ng close supervision, supervision si Pedro. And He wants Peter to see how He is going to demonstrate His teaching to others, how He is preaching to others. He wants to instruct Peter, Simon Peter. And He wants to be noticed. Kasi kung malayo-layo si Jesus, hindi, baka hindi siya mapansin ni Pedro yung mga ginagawa niya. Because he cares for Peter. You see, he wants to disciple Peter. That's why, dude, pinili niya yung, yung boat ni, ni Pedro. You need to trust the grace of God. Trust that God is working in your life. So, in verse 8, tingnan natin. Uh, first, uh, Luke chapter 5, verse 8. Let's see. Anong sinabi ni Pedro? When Simon Peter saw it, no? what happened nga pala? Nung they were told to launch out into the deep, ang sabi nga ni Peter, sabi nga dito, And Simon answering said, And three master, we have told all the night, and have taken nothing, nevertheless at thy word, I will I will let down the net. And when they had that, this done, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes, and their net break. Halos maputol yung kanilang lambat, kasi sa dami ng mga isda. And they become unto their partners, which were in the other ship, that they should come and help them. 
And they came and filled all the ships so that they began to sing. Tignan silang malunod kasi napuno na ng isda. Anong sabi ni Pedro? When Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knee saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. Sabi niya, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man. Gusto niya ang lumayo si Jesus. See, God knows what He is doing. Alam ni Jesus yung kanyang ginagawa. So, makita natin na God's favor is on those who are humble. Number four. Number four. Four point. We must be obedient to launch out into the deep. Okay? Balikan natin ng Luke chapter 5. Verse 4. Now when he had left speaking, he said unto Simon, Launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a drop. Para po makita mo yung calling ng Panginoon or how can you respond to the call of God, you must be obedient to launch out to the deep. Some preachers, what they are doing is just fishing on the aquarium. Those lazy preachers, they do not want to labor hard. Gusto na ready-made na lang. Ano? And they scatter the ship because they do not want to launch out into the deep. So they divide churches. Anong sabi sa Jeremiah chapter 23? Woe unto the pastors that destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture, said the Lord. Kasi ang uh, principle sa Bible. Uh, Romans chapter 15 verse 20. Sabi pa dito. Yes, so have I strived to preach the gospel not where Christ was named, lest I should build upon another man's foundation. And also in 2 Corinthians, so si Pablo, punta siya doon sa mga lugar na wala pang nagpipreach. Tingnan natin sa 2 Corinthians chapter 10. Verse 15, sabi pa dito, Not boasting of things without our measure, that is of other men's labors, but having hope, when your faith is increased, that we shall be enlarged by you, according to our rule abundantly. Verse 16, to preach the gospel in the regions beyond you and not to boast in another man's line of things made ready to our hand. Okay, God is against those uh, who scatter, divide the sheep. Jeremiah chapter 23 verse 1. What is needed is obedience. If you want God to use you mightily, wag dun sa tabi-tabi lang ng dagat, kung saan meron ng mga isda doon na na, 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 uh, na bingwit ng ibang mga fishermen. So, mahalaga, launch out into the deep. Yun ang utos ng ating Panginoon. That is a challenge to preachers to go and reach out to the regions beyond. Now, this could also mean, yung launch out into the deep, this could also mean taking a great challenge. Kung medyo malalim-lalim na, don't go back to the shallow area of the sea. Kundi, go farther doon sa deep. Try harder. Try deeper. Move forward, not backward. Because God is not pleased with those who move backward. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 38, sabi nga dito. Hebrews chapter 10, Verse 38, Now the just shall live by faith, but if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. That means we always move forward. Try harder, deeper. Move forward, not backward. So, yan po ang point dito. Maaring yung calling mo ay hindi naman sa ministry, pero God has other calling for you. Pero, keep moving forward. 
Number five, fifth point, point in Luke 5. It says here, And Simon, verse 5, And Simon answering said unto him, Master, we have told all the night, and have taken nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the net. That means, at thy word. That means, trust God's word. When you have no one or nothing to trust, not even your own self, trust God's word. God's word is trustworthy. There are two things that God cannot do. God cannot lie. God cannot change. His word is faithful. All you need to do is to have faith that will result to obedience. You cannot obey without truly having faith. You cannot obey without faith. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6, Without faith it is impossible to please Him, for he that cometh to God must believe that He is, and that He is a rewarder of them that diligently seek Him. You must see God's word is trustworthy. You must trust God's word. Yan po. Number 6, Pag-aling na punto, So that you would respond to the call of God, Mahalaga po yung pagtitiwala sa kanyang salita. But you must see God's goodness and power. You must see God's goodness and power. Perhaps you have not seen God's goodness and power. You do not see how God is working. Kasi it is when we obey by faith that we gain experience of God's goodness. Just imagine kung hindi sinunod ni Pedro si Jesus. Kung hindi niya sinunod, ang sabi niya, ang sabi niya, and Simon answering said in verse 5, unto him, Master, we have told all the night and have taken nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the net. And when they had this done, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes and their net break. Napakalaki ng, uh, o oh, abundan siya ang kaninang nahuli na mga isda, napakadami. Ano? So, pagkita natin dito, mga kapatid, um, tinawag nila yung mga partners nila kasi hindi nila makaya sa dami ng kanilang nakuhang mga isda. Ano? At dahan-dahan nang nalunod yung barko o yung boat. Hindi naman malaki yun. Parang lansya lang yun o maliit lang na, na boat. Ano? Fishing boat. When Simon Peter saw it, and he fell down at Jesus' knees at Jesus' knees saying, Depart from me for I am a sinful a sinful man, O Lord. In verse 9, For he was astonished and all that were with him at the drought of the fishes which they had taken. Nagulat. Nagtaka. Namangha si Pedro sa isda dami ng isda na nakuha nila. Just imagine. The whole night, they toiled fishing, wala silang nakuha. No? The whole night. Dahil sa sinabi ni Jesus, nagkaroon ng epekto. Ang dami ng nakuha nila ng isda. So, anong ibig sabihin? When they obey God's word, they experience the goodness of God. They gain experience that faith and obedience will result to fruitfulness and their faith uh, grew. Lumago yung kanilang pananampalataya. Nakita nila kung gaano ka, kapag makapangyarihan ng ating uh, Panginoon. Ano? So, nakita nila na ang Panginoon ay talagang makapangyarihan. So, ano ba ang dapat? The disciples realized that the one who called them is a powerful God, omnipotent God. Yan po ang ibig sabihin. Minsan po, you know, you are being called by the Lord and you do not respond because you think God is not powerful. The Lord can, can produce fruits. The Lord can produce fruits in us. You don't have to worry. Hindi ko kaya mag-win ang souls. But it is the Lord. Help this fruit in us. Sabi nga sa John chapter 12 verse 24. 
except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abideth alone. If it dies, it bring it uh, for fruits. Dandami lang ang bunga kapag kamatay tayo sa ating sarili. Only whenever we are willing, God can use us. He can, he can change us. He can make us productive. He can make you productive. Sabi niya sa Matthew 4.19, Follow me. I will make you fishers of men. Kung paano naging marami ang nakuha niya ng isda, ganun din. God will make you effective. Dito tayo sa uh, pagbito. Ano? Kung titingnan natin sa Luke chapter 5, verse Verse 10, And so was also James and John, the son of Zebedee, which were partners with Simon. And Jesus said unto Simon, Fear not, for thou shalt catch men. Fear not, from henceforth thou shalt catch men. Do not be afraid to follow God's calling. It is the highest calling. Matthew chapter 4, verse 19, Jesus said, Follow me, I will make you fishers of men. Christ is the greatest leader. Christ is the most influential person that ever lived on this planet Earth. Sabi nga ng isang poem, all the armies that ever marched, all the navies that ever sailed, all the parliaments that ever sat, all the kings that ever reigned put together have not affected this one solitary life, Jesus Christ. Christians are great leaders great leaders by following Jesus. So do not be afraid, mga kapatid. The greatest hindrance to productivity is fear. Yung matakot ka. Yung matakot ka at ayaw mong susunod. Chapter 25, makita natin yung sabi niya, I was afraid. Yun lang ang dahilan. Yun po ang pinakamdahilan niya kung bakit hindi niya ininvest yung ibinigay na talad sa kanya. Kung natatakot ka gumawa sa kalooban ng Panginoon, do what you feel. Number 8. Eight. 8 points. Dito tayo sa last. No? And when, and when they had brought their ships to land, they forsook all and followed him. They forsook all and followed him. We must understand that the greatest task on earth is so winning. Wala nang ibang mas higit na pinakahigit na gawain kundi yung gawain ng Panginoon. Nakita nila ang value nito. Kaya yun ang reason. They forsook all. Iniwan nila lahat. Luke 19.10 Sabi nga ni Jesus, For the Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. God, to create the world, He just spoke. But to save the world, it caused the death of His only begotten Son, Jesus. Yeah, napakahalaga ng pag-uwi ng souls upang sila'y maligtas. The mandate of the Lord to His churches in Matthew 28, 18-20, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. In Psalm 126, verse 5 and 6, Sinasabi, They that sow in tears shall reap in joy. He that goeth and weepeth, bearing precious seed, shall doubtless come again with rejoicing, bringing his James with him. You see, Mark 8, 36, What doth it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? Yung kaluluwa ng isang tao is, that is worth compared to everything. Kaya, ang ginawa nila, they forsook all. Iwan nila lahat. Sinunod lamang nila si Jesus. Are you called by the Lord? Are you struggling with your work? And you cannot fully give up even if you're losing a job? Even if doors are closing, you know, in this world, no hiring? 
you keep giving your time to it even though what you are doing is not really important. You lose direction. Perhaps God is calling you and just trust that God will provide. Trust God's providence. Kasi kapag tinawag ka niya, sabi niya, follow me, I will make you fishers of men. Our responsibility is to follow him and his is to equip us to become fishers of fishers of men. Or you may have other calling to partner in the ministry. It means to be God's instruments, to be God's instrument of blessing to support the ministry. You see, it is God who can give you and make you productive. You may not, you may not resign. You may be called. You may be called into another greater job. I think God is giving you greater opportunity in your work because God has a purpose for you. Our goal in life is to be fishers of men. You may be called in a full-time or part-time ministry. Pero ito yung challenge, mga kapatid. We are to launch out to the deep and to catch men. Yun ang utos ng ating Panginoon. So sa buhay po natin, ito po yung mga reasons kung bakit po we should respond to the call of God. Ano man ang calling ng ating Panginoon, wag po tayong matakot. But we just have to believe. Ang sabi ng Panginoon, launch out into the deep. And Peter said, at thy word, I will let down the nets. What about you? brothers and sisters. What are the challenges in your life? Remember, God is a challenge and calling for you. Ano man ang calling mo sa buhay? Isipin mo parati ang Panginoon. It should be in line with God's purpose and calling. 